Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O loving Father, grant that your church, being gathered by your Holy Spirit, may be dedicated more fully to your service and live united in love according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you at the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. Three days later, he called together the local leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, he said to them, Brothers, though I have done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors, yet I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. When they had examined me, the Romans wanted to release me, because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to the emperor, even though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is, with, since it is for the sake of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. They replied, We have received no letters from Judea about you, and none of the brothers coming here has reported or spoken anything evil about you. But we would like to hear from you what you think. For with regard to this sect, we know that everything, everywhere, it is spoken against. After they had set a day to meet with him, they came to him at his lodgings in great numbers. From morning until evening, he explained the matter to them, testifying to the kingdom of God, and trying to convince them about Jesus from both the law of Moses and from the prophets. Some were convinced by what he said, while others refused to believe. So they disagreed with each other, and as they were leaving, Paul made one further statement. The Holy Spirit, it was right, the Holy Spirit was right in saying to your ancestors, through the prophet Israel, go to this people and say, you will listen but never understand, you will indeed look but never perceive. He lived there two whole years at his own expense, and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 11, verses 4 through 8, which we'll recite together in unison. They're found, these verses are found on page 596. Psalm 11, verses 4 to the end. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the inhabited world. In piercing eye, his piercing eye weighs our worth. The Lord weighs the righteous as well as the wicked. But those who delight in violence he abhors. Upon the wicked he shall rain coals of fire and burning sulfur. A scorching wind shall be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He delights in righteous deeds and the just shall see his face. The 
Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had, who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So the rumor spread in the, com in the community that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, today we have reached the end of the book of Acts and the end of the Gospel of John. And um, I'm not going to tell you that they have much in common. I'm not sure that they do have much in common at all, except that they give us an opportunity to say goodbye, in a way, to Paul and his companions, and goodbye to John and, and his companions. I want to remind you the things that we skipped over um, Paul at the, end of, at the end of Acts. We skipped over Paul being in the 14-day uh, storm at sea, then shipwrecked on Malta. When he gets to Malta as he's building a fire, a snake bites him, and people think he's about to die, but no harm comes to him. And then he starts himself to cure the sick in Malta before we get to the end of the book of Acts, when uh, then Paul heads up to Rome, and we heard those final verses of the book of Acts. At the what, what's interesting about the book of Acts is that we don't, we say goodbye to Paul before his own end comes. And the, the New Testament provides no account of the death of St. Paul. He um, remains in more or less a prisoner um, of some type in Rome, and it's assumed that Paul, in the tradition states, that he was, uh, that he was executed, probably beheaded with a sword. But the scriptures itself don't, themselves don't tell us what happens to Paul. The scriptures don't tell us what happens at the end of John either. The, the uh, text makes claims that scholars tell us it's hard to believe that uh, the beloved disciple of John, whose account was called, never called by name in John's gospel, is in fact uh, the person who is writing this account. Um, scholars tell us that that strains credulity for reasons that I can't get into here, not because I've mastered them so well and I, and I can't possibly untangle them for you, but because I haven't mastered them that well and I can't possibly untangle them for you. Um, so we get to the end of both of these um, books and both of these accounts, and we don't really know about the ends that are coming to them. We have this interesting question. I don't think it ranks with the top questions. You know, I, I have a list of my favorite questions in the scriptures. Someday I should uh, write a book about the best questions in the scriptures. Um, you know that number one is what is truth, and number two is who told you that you were naked. This question is a, uh, a rhetorical question, and it probably doesn't, doesn't rank up there, but it might make one of the late chapters in the book, I don't know. Uh, the question comes from Peter, and um, it's when Peter sees that John, that, that Jesus is calling the beloved disciple to be with him. And it's a terrific question. Peter says, Lord, what about him? What about him? It's a, it's a good question to focus on for a minute. When a person asks a question like that, Lord, what about him? Um, it seems like that um, question could come out of, come from two places, one of two places. That question could come from a place of jealousy or from a place of concern. 
Lord, what about him? And it's pretty clear to me uh, in these last verses of John's Gospel that when Peter asks, Lord, what about him? About the beloved disciple, that question is coming from a place of jealousy. Peter has always wanted to be near Jesus. And he's always wanted Jesus to love him. We can't fault Peter for either of these things. In fact, we should emulate Peter for both wanting to be near Jesus and wanting Jesus to love him. Why shouldn't uh, Peter have wanted these things? So Peter's always wanted Jesus to be near Jesus and he wanted Jesus to love him. And he's jealous of the beloved disciple about whom the rumor would get going that, oh, he'll never die. But um, the, John himself tells us that's not what Jesus said. So this question could come from a place of either jealousy or concern. And it seems like it's important for us to recognize that too, because we ask that question all the time. Around the rectory, we're constantly saying it about Redmond. We say, Lord, what about him? And um, then we have a little seminar to see whether or not in asking that question, we're asking it out of jealousy or concern. So far, it's been jealousy every time. And, uh, but part of the reason we go through this exercise, if in fact we do, is um, because we want God to help move us from jealousy to concern. Wouldn't that be a good thing? to be able to move from jealousy to concern. Someday we're gonna be sitting there in the rectory kitchen praying together and we're gonna get to that point where we say, where we look at Redmond and we, then we put our heads up and stare into heaven and we say, Lord, what about him? And God is going to help us to ask that question more out of concern than jealousy. And then we'll all learn much better how to be near Jesus and how much Jesus loves us. There's no deficiency in Jesus' love for Peter, but Peter doesn't know that yet, which probably shows a deficiency in Peter's love. Maybe not for Jesus, but certainly in Peter's love for the beloved disciple. And maybe Jesus is showing us to having Peter ask this question. That as long as we're jealous of our brothers and sisters, as long as we can't love our brothers and sisters well enough, it's hard for us to love God the way God wants to be loved. And it's hard for us to accept, acknowledge, and realize all of the love that God has for us. Could there be all that in this little question? Lord, what about him? Maybe. Maybe there is. There's a lot to be found in the questions that are posed in the New Testament. So here we are at the end of John's Gospel, at the end of the book of Acts. We say goodbye to Paul in Acts. We say goodbye to John and to Peter and others at the end of John's Gospel. And um, it's not, of course, an end, but it is a beginning because God does not leave us comfortless. And although this isn't the way the narrative unfolds in the New Testament, in the church year, once we've said goodbye to John and to Peter and to Paul, then God is telling us to be prepared to open our hearts for a new welcome to welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives so that the Holy Spirit can help us to move from jealousy to concern and to learn to love one another better so that we can realize how much God loves us and we can be ready to accept and receive God's love. May the Spirit always help us to do so. In the name of God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world using Form 6 of the Prayers of the People, found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors. And for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who may serve to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the Gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Daniel, our bishop, for Kyle, Nora, Stephen, <coughs> Nicholas, and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters who worship and work in this place and parish, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially all those who are sick with the coronavirus or suffering because of it in any way. For those essential workers in various occupations on whom we depend to get through our days and to carry on with our lives. For doctors, nurses, other medical professionals, and all who work in hospitals and emergency services, on ambulances and other medical centers so to care for the sick and those who are in need. For the unemployed who are worried about their futures, their livelihoods, their families, and their well-being. For those members of this parish community who are sick or in trouble of any kind, and especially remembering to pray at this time for Chris, George, Sue, Tom, Kent John, George, John, Tim, Homer, Mary Jane, Judith, Mark, Julio, Marlene, Sarah, Brian, Mark, Todd, Olivia, Carol, Patty, Richard, Nathan, Gary, Charlie, Will, and all those others who we remember in the silence of our hearts. Continuing also to pray for peace in our time, for an end to the war in Syria, and for an end to the threat of warfare, oppression, violence, and terrorism throughout the world for peace in our own nation and for a calming of the current tensions that so grip areas of this nation, and for a commitment to justice and equity in the cities and of this nation and across this land, so that all people may be protected by the law and held accountable by justice. For all those who are refugees around the world and in search, in search of a home, for those who are living in great poverty in too many places around the world, especially those living in poverty in this nation and in this city, those who are our neighbors in Philadelphia. For those who are homeless, hungry, frightened, alone, lost. For those who are in prison, especially those who have been wrongfully imprisoned and those who have been sentenced to death. For those who are struggling with addictions, those who are suffering from mental illness, for all those who are exploited or abused, for those who are caught in abusive relationships and una unable to escape abusive households, and for those who suffer in any way in body, mind, or estate. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life giving thanks especially for the beauty of this day, giving thanks for the Sunday Love Project and all those who work to make that project pos possible and to feed those who are hungry, giving thanks for St. James School for their work and ministry, giving thanks for Eleanor, Redmond, and Gabby, our ministry residents, and their work and ministry, and giving thanks for all those who offer their ministries in this place and parish and throughout the church at this time of pandemic. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, 
that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Remembering especially all those who have been killed by the coronavirus in the past day, and all those whose lives have been taken from them in acts of war and violence and oppression in recent days. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put for their trust in you. you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, knowing and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God has gone up with a shout, and the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through your duly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples, and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us that where he is, there we might also be, and reign with him in glory. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, 
in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Mark, the Evangelist, and with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of an everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.
Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed the world. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord. Let us pray. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure. And grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 